Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to this Hornet update for the 13th of August, 2018. This month, we're going to be updating the AMRAM, the AIM-7, updating the EW system, as well as introducing the AIM-9X Sidewinder. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of these. Let's get started. So one of the first things we'll take a look at are some of the new EW tools or electronic warfare. And we'll come down here to the attack page and we'll select the uh, EW push tile. And now we see we have some new symbols above the indicators uh, on the scope. So for example, we have a MiG-29 here with a carrot on top that indicates a hostile airborne radar. We have a, a low blow uh, SAM radar for an SA-3, uh, which indicates by the hat with the walls. Another MiG-29, a Hawk SAM, a search radar, and a friendly uh, E-2 Hawkeye with the search radar uh, symbol to the uh, right. And the uh, hat circle on top, which indicates a friendly contact. Now, if we go ahead and press the uh, EW HUD, HUD push style here, we have a lot of this information now duplicated up on the HUD with a maximum of uh, six indicators. So again, we have a MiG-29, a low blow, another 29, and a Hawk. And right now, we're, we're showing those as short, solid lines. That indicates that all these radars are in search mode. So now, if we come down also to um, the panel down here, we can go to offset. And now we can see that that 129 symbol is actually 229s, make 29s in close formation. And we broke those out in azimuth uh, for those RWR contacts. And same with the Hawk contacts as well. Let's go ahead and take that off for now. Now you see those came back to a single contact because they're so close to each other. And now what's going to happen here as we drive on in, um, once one of those radars gets a lock on us, it will go to a medium length line and it will be dashed. And then once it's uh, locked and fires a missile, it will be a long solid line. And that should happen any second here now. And it just did. So it looks like that low blow just locked us up. And you can also see that down here. And the uh, hat circle below the symbol indicates that the uh, radar is uh, tracking us in a STT type of lock. And also we have a new uh, sound that when you have a new airborne intercept uh, contact out there, you'll hear it's called the waterfall sound. And that looks like that MiG-29 locked us up as well. And also right now we're in uh, no weapon selected or anything locked, so we have six contacts. But if we have a weapon selected and lock one of those up, then those will be reduced. For example, if you have an AIM-9 selected with a target locked, it'll just have one indicator on the EW HUD. And I think the uh, AIM-7 is 4, as well as the uh, AIM-120. Okay, so that 29 ahead of us uh, locked us up. We have a solid line on the HUD. We have the um, uh, line here on the EW display as well. It's blinking. And um, so at this point, we have a missile inbound. And those are the basic um, kind of uh, points of using the uh, new EW HUD, as well as some of the new symbols here on the EW display. Okay, so now let's take a look at the AIM-120 AMRAM features. Uh, before we do this, let's go ahead and uh, lock up a target. And then to select the AMRAM, we'll go uh, right on the weapon select switch. And let's pause it for a second. Now we zoom on the HUD here. We see we have uh, 23 ACT, and ACT stands for active. And what this means is that if I were to launch this missile right now, in 23 seconds afterwards, that the uh, small radar seeker in the nose of that missile would turn on and go active, and then continue the intercept to that target all by itself, which is really handy because once it does so, you can turn away from the target and you can engage a different target. So a very handy feature. So let's uh, zoom back out, and we'll pause this, and we'll center up the dot. And FOX3. And now we see that ACT on the HUD is uh, counting down uh, until the seeker goes active. And that's also duplicated here on the triangle of the flyout queue to the target. And the number here indicates the time to active for the missile still on the rail uh, on the wing. 
So it looks like uh, seven seconds until radar active on the AMRAM. And now the ACT is transferred to uh, time to go, TTG. So uh, time to go until impact. And we see now that under the triangle, there's an A indicating that the missile is active at this point. And impact. Now also, even with a target locked up, we can go cage, uncage on the throttle, and we can put ourselves into visual mode. And we can cage, uncage back. And the nice thing about the visual mode is, uh, even if you don't have a radar locked uh, on the target, you can go ahead and launch that missile in visual mode, and it will seek out uh, the first thing it sees in there, which you know have to be a little bit careful when you have a lot of friendlies in the area. So I put myself back into visual mode again, indicated by the large uh, dashed reticle with no radar lock, and also the visual indication in the center. And I can go ahead and put the uh, target within that large reticle, trigger down. And as easy as that. So that's some of the new cool stuff on the AMRAM. Uh, let's take a look at the AIM-7 now. Okay, so let's talk AIM-7 now. And the biggest new feature here is the addition of the flood mode. And the flood mode is more of a backup system that if you're in uh, close range combat with a Sparrow and you can't get that radar lock, it's a great backup. So to select it, you're just going to action forward on the weapon select switch to select uh, Sparrow. And now underneath the weapon ID and count, you have flood. And all you're really going to do is you're going to position the uh, target within that reticle. And when you pull the trigger and the AIM-7 comes off the rail, uh, the radar is going to go into a pulse Doppler illuminator mode, or PDI, and illuminate uh, ahead of you in that reticle. And then the seeker is going to try to intercept what it gets that uh, reflection off. So go ahead and Fox 1. And quite simple, as you can see. And here on the radar display, you'll see it's in flood mode as well with uh, PDI. And let's go ahead and try that again. And you also notice that we have another flood indicator on the right side, that it's in flood active mode, as well as a countdown for a straight line uh, time of that uh, missile. So again, a very simple, yet can be very effective um, in the right situation. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the AIM-9X. So one of the new air-to-air -air missiles coming to DCS World, and the Hornet specifically, is the AIM-9X. And of course, one of the big uh, advantages of the 9X is it's pairing with a joint helmet-mounted queuing system, or the helmet. But the helmet's going to be coming later into development. Uh, so now we're just going to focus on the 9X uh, by itself. And then we'll add the helmet in uh, a bit later in development. And operation of the 9X, it's uh, very, very much like you would expect with the uh, 9 Lima and the 9 Mike. Uh, the big uh, advantages, of course, is its uh, higher off foresight capability as well as a bit better range. And also it's uh, digital in nature, so the uh, sounds you hear on the 9X are going to be a bit different in nature than what you expect to see with the uh, more analog uh, Lima in mic versions. So that's a little uh, overview of some of the stuff to look forward to in DCS World. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks.